when you're feeling all alone only you to hold your own no one there to help you only there to hold you down so stop don't beat up yourself cause it's everyone else so don't look down We all have something we don't like about our bodies. It could be acne, a slightly crooked nose, we're short or lanky, the list goes on. It's easy to forget that people come in all shapes and sizes and that has nothing to do with your value as a person. It's healthy to want to improve ourselves, but the change we want to make should remain within healthy limits. Sometimes it's difficult to differentiate between healthy goals and drastic harmful ones. Eating disorders emerge when that line is blurred. And while aiming to better yourself is natural, having the courage to accept the things we cannot change is extremely important. When Sterling was only 12 years old, someone made a comment about her weight, likely not knowing that it would be the start of a years long struggle with body image and eating disorders. This is her story. I was skipping meals. When I did eat something, I would feel super guilty. So I would start sticking my fingers down my throat. That's what spiraled me down into depression and an eating disorder and cutting. I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. It started spiraling out of control and I ended up having to be committed into a mental health facility. My name is Sterling and I'm from Merritt Island, Florida, which is a small beach town. I grew up with my mom. My dad wasn't really in the picture. I have two sisters. Me and my sisters are like best friends. We did everything together. I remember going to the bridge over the river and we would watch the shuttle launches and it was so close. You could like feel the heat coming up from the water from the shuttle launch. I was a cheerleader. I cheered for an all-star team and then I also cheered for my high school and I ran track and cross country. <laughs> when I was 12 years old, someone made a comment to me that changed the way that I would look at myself forever. I was in my bathing suit playing outside at the pool with my little sister. Hey, Sterling. Yeah? You're getting a bit of a gut on you. Look at Sterling, she has a gut. I went into the house, looked in the mirror, and turned to the side and looked at my stomach, and I just thought I was fat. It changed the way that I looked at myself. I would wake up in the morning and go stand in front of my bathroom mirror, and stare at my gut that this person said that I had. It started with, oh, I'm just not gonna eat breakfast. And then, oh, well, let me just see if I can skip lunch too. And then I just kept thinking that way to the point where I wasn't eating all day. One of my best friends in middle school found out that I was purging. She went and told her mom, and her mom went and talked to my mom about it. But my mom came to me and I was like, oh no, it's just a one-time thing. I promise I'll never do it again. But that was a lie because I was doing it every day. I would go home and eat dinner and I would feel so guilty that I would go in the bathroom and stick my fingers down my throat. It's the most degrading thing. I don't know why I would even think to do such a horrible thing to my body, but I just really wanted to be skinny. When I went into high school, I was like the cool kid. I made varsity cheerleading as a freshman. I was on the track team. I was really good at track. I was super smart. 
On the outside, it looked like I was the perfect kid. I had a lot of friends. I would go out with friends and hang out with them all the time. But on the inside, nobody knew that I wasn't eating. I would go home every night and stick my fingers down my throat and throw up. And I felt terrible throughout the day because I didn't have any food in my body. And they didn't know that I was going home and cutting myself whenever I felt sad. So it was a really good facade that I had going on on the outside. When it came to running track and cheerleading, I honestly don't know how I made it through. I was starving myself and I don't know how I was going and running miles and miles in the afternoon. I do know that I would go home and just zonk out because I was so exhausted. I would nap all the time. I didn't want to go out with friends or go do something fun. I just wanted to sleep. And I know that was because I was starving myself. The summer before I went into my junior year of high school, my boyfriend broke up with me for no reason, just out of the blue. He was like, I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be with you. And in hindsight, it was just puppy love, like it wasn't real love. But I was devastated when he broke up with me. I remember that day so well. After he broke up with me, I went into my room and I took one of those disposable razors. I went into my closet because my little sister was home and I shut the door and I just started cutting myself. Sterling? Sterling? Sterling! And she said it looked like a horror movie. And she started yelling at me because she didn't know what to do. And I just remember throwing my stuffed animals at her and screaming, I hate you, I hate you, to my mom who didn't do anything to me. When in reality, I think that I was just that I hate you, I really hated myself. And I busted out of the closet, past my mom, and I ran away. Sterling, Sterling, wait, Sterling, come back. And my mom ended up calling 911. I remember the cop car, and one of my volunteer track coaches stepped out of the car because he was also a police officer. That was the most embarrassing <laughs> moment of my life, to see someone who I work with every day at track practice, who knows me, who knows me as this perfect student to see me at my worst. And I rode in the back of a cop car to this place called Circles of Care, which is basically a mental institution. And they had to write down on a piece of paper all the marks I had on my body. And then they gave me paper underwear and these ugly, degrading, like gray sweatshirt and sweatpants, and then just threw me in this place with like 10 other kids who all wanted to kill themselves. And I was just listening to their stories and I kept thinking in the back of my head, I'm not like these kids, I don't wanna die. But in reality, I, we were all there for the same reason because we were a harm to ourselves or to someone else. It was a real wake up call. They wouldn't let me go to sleep with sheets because they were scared we would try to strangle ourselves. They monitored everything that we ate after the first day of me being there, they had a counselor come in and ask me why I wasn't eating. And I just told her, I don't eat. <laughs> so I guess she went and reported back to the head counselor who had me come in and talk to her. And they wanted to put me on medication, but I was like, I'm not crazy, I'm perfect. I don't need to be on medicine, only crazy people are on medicine. On the third day, my mom came and picked me up, and even the psychiatrist told my mom, she doesn't belong here, but you really need to get her help because she is not okay. And from that moment on, my mom decided, okay, we're gonna put you in therapy, we're gonna let you see a psychiatrist, and that's when I started the healing process. The day that I ended up being committed was probably one of the worst days of my life. To have my little sisters see me go through that, for them to see me getting arrested and blood dripping down my arms, and my mom, who has done everything for me, I, I know she felt like a failure because how could her daughter hate herself so much to where she would do that? 
I was hurting so many other people because I was hurting myself and they loved me so much and they didn't want to see that happening. I went to see a psychiatrist. Every time I would go to a psychiatrist, I would have to step on the scale, get weighed. If I lost weight, they would put a sad face on my little chart. If I gained weight, that would be happy and well, happy for them. But for me, that was like, I hated seeing that. But my psychiatrist explained to me that I was harming my body by throwing up and not eating. My dentist told me that when I went for a checkup that the, my back teeth were rotting, they were eroding, which what teenager wants to hear that. Also, one personal thing, my period was extremely irregular. I ended up getting my period super late, like 15 years old, and then I only got it once or twice. And my psychiatrist explained to me that that's because I was so thin that my body, my reproductive system was just not working. It was shutting down. At that point, I was diagnosed with binge purge type anorexia nervosa. And my doctors told me, you may never even be able to have kids ever because of the damage you've done of starving yourself and throwing up. Basically, I remember waking up one day in my apartment and just being like, today's the day. If you eat something, you're not gonna throw it up. If you feel sad, you're not gonna cut. We're gonna make it through this. So that's what I did. Instead of trying to lose weight by starving myself, I started researching how to lose weight by eating a healthy diet. And then that turned into me changing my major and pursuing an exercise science major and learning how to keep people healthy through good nutrition and working out learning how to work with people who have eating disorders and showing them, hey, you don't have to starve yourself to lose weight. There are much healthier ways to do this. The most important thing that you have to realize is that everyone can want you to get better and for you to make a change, but unless you want to do that, it's never going to happen. So you have to look at yourself. And I know it's hard. I know it's really hard to look at yourself in the mirror and point out the things that you're doing wrong, but you have to do it in order to get better. When I was in college and I was getting better, I really turned to fitness as an outlet for cutting and for not binging. When I got into the gym and started lifting weights, I was instantly <laughs> addicted to that. I loved it. Today, I graduated from UF with an exercise science degree. I'm now a personal trainer and I'm engaged to a wonderful fiance, the love of my life now, <laughs> Ryan. And now we have a beautiful baby boy named Nash. And when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, thank God, because I never thought that I would be able to have a family. I had doctors telling me that because of my eating disorder that I wouldn't be able to have a child. Every time I look at him, I'm just like, I'm so happy to have you. I feel really vain saying this, but I look in the mirror every day and I'm so proud of myself for how far I've come. Coming from being 97 pounds and being dead inside to now, I've done a complete 180. I no longer binge and purge. I no longer cut. I've learned coping mechanisms. I know that when I have those thoughts, I know how to distract myself from them and not do those terrible behaviors anymore. So I'm really happy, really happy with the way things turned out. When I look back at pictures now of 13-year-old Sterling, I was not fat at all. <laughs> I can't believe that I would look at myself and think that I was overweight. That's just ridiculous. So the takeaway that I have from my whole story is that one really mean thing can change the outlook on someone's entire life. You don't think that one mean word can ruin someone's day or someone's life, but it really can. Someone calling me fat basically almost killed me. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. And I want anyone to know that if you're going through something so hard right now, just know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you may feel like things will never get better, but they, they really will. Just keep on going.
I resonated with Sterling's story a lot. Maybe a few years ago, I was on the plumper side too. I remember my brother called me a fatty patty at one point and like, it was just little side comments like that that would really just set me off. I feel insecure when I go to like a change room and stuff because I'm too skinny and I'm not as big as the other guys. And I do feel insecure about that. I think I still probably struggle with trying to be a big, strong, macho guy. For some people, they can brush off something you say, but I think if you already have self-esteem issues, and a lot of people do, even one word, one comment can really affect someone so devastatingly. For example, when I was probably about uh, 12 or 13, someone at my school looked at me and said, girls like you shouldn't wear crop tops. Stuff like that still makes me feel badly about myself. For her, it was the hardest struggle because she stopped eating. She got really depressed and anxious to the point of cutting herself. That's something she struggled with yeah. and that's not something she's ashamed of anymore. I know a lot of people that cut. Do you guys know people that cut? Yeah, yeah definitely. A For sure. mm -hmm. They feel that kind of hatred towards themselves and instead of um, expressing that pain to someone else. They decide to take on that pain by themselves. Often cutting does become like an addiction. You need to feel this pain, need to hurt. It can start from a young age and just kind of build up and build up until you just get into the cycle of hatred. You don't like your body and so you hurt yourself because you hate yourself. One of my other friends in, in high school right now, he told me that he does actually cut. I talk through with him a lot, and I think that's helped him a lot, that he has someone to talk to. The problem with self-harming is that those are scars for life. It's never going away. It is something that we, a lot of people go through, but the truth is, it's not about your body. It's obviously the way you see yourself, and only when that changes will your whole outlook change. We all have experienced some form of body shaming. Maybe someone says something to you, or you said something to someone else, or you witnessed it. You might have even shamed yourself when you look in the mirror. Too fat, too skinny, too tall, too short, not muscular enough, too muscular. This type of talk and thinking is extremely damaging as it can trigger a mental illness known as an eating disorder. Someone with an eating disorder has a distorted view of their body and health. Their brain commands them to behave in ways to support this dangerous view of their body. This cycle can be a difficult one to manage, and in Sterling's case, we saw how this led her towards destroying her health. The health problems associated with eating disorders range from psychological distress to digestive illness, muscle breakdown, brain and heart damage, to ultimately death. In fact, eating disorders have the highest death rate among all mental illnesses. Most of us know what proper nutrition is. Sterling was perfectly healthy, but that one phrase about her body image from her past triggered an extreme response. Here's what you should know about eating disorders. Number one, genes alone do not determine your risk for an eating disorder. Your social interactions play a role as well. Therefore, we all have a responsibility in making sure we stop body shaming in our homes, schools, and community. This includes becoming more aware of the way you speak to yourself. Number two, Eating disorders affect all genders, ages, cultural backgrounds, sexual preferences, body shapes, and weight. This health problem involves all of us. So don't be tricked into thinking someone couldn't possibly be struggling with an eating disorder because of what you see on the outside. And number three, full recovery from an eating disorder is possible, especially with medical and psychological intervention and support. Therefore, the sooner you reach out to get help, or help someone in need, the better the chances of living a life of health. Remember this, your mental and physical health depends on it. With that in mind, until the next time, let's do better by thinking better. It's impossible to tell what internal battle someone is fighting just by looking at them. Regardless of their physical appearance, a person with an eating disorder has a warped view of themselves and is unable to see what others see. In Sterling's case, her active lifestyle masked her unhealthy habits for years, and no one was aware she was suffering on the inside. The importance of eating healthy, we've heard it a million times before. What some of us forget is that eating healthy has a dramatic effect on our mental capacity and mood. A healthy diet is a way to keep your body and brain functioning at its full potential. Your body needs to be nourished. And words have a way of nourishing too. When's the last time you gave somebody a compliment? 
Your words mean more to others than you realize. Kindness is free, easy, and has a monumental power.